This meeting is being recorded. I saw that on the sheet and it wasn't highlighted or not. Good afternoon. This webinar offers closed captioning. To enable closed captioning, click on the live transcript button on the bottom of your screen and choose your preferred method. Welcome to the City of Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection webinar. We have adapted our regular business education workshops at City Hall into these webinars until further notice. Please note, any website or email that I mentioned will be posted in the chat box. For those seeking business license assistance, we strongly encourage the process of license and permits online. Business license can be applied for or renewed online at chicagobusinessdirect.org, or you can call 312-74-GO-BIS. If you are a part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program, you can get credit for joining this webinar by sending an email to bacpoutreach at cityofchicago.org. To learn more about this program, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. This webinar is being recorded and will be available at youtube.com forward slash Chicago BACP. I will post the mentioned information in the chat. We encourage all attendees to ask questions. Please use the chat box to send your questions. There will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Please note that the views, information, and opinions expressed during this webinar are, slow, are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily represent the official's policy or position of the Department of Business Affairs, like Consumer Protection, or the City of Chicago. Today's webinar is entitled, Getting Started in CEO. At this time, I will now turn this webinar over to Edwin for us to begin. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining today. Just to confirm, uh, can everyone see my screen? I know there were a few comments. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Donna. Uh, cool. Very cool. So uh, let's get it started. You know what? I'm gonna close these uh, this chat box because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be all uh, looking at the chats. Um, thank you all for joining me. Uh, my name is Ed Romero. Uh, today I'd like to talk through a topic that is near and dear to my heart: uh, search engine optimization or SEO. Uh, if you'd like to contact me, I have a QR code which you can scan with your phone, as well as some contact uh, information on the right hand side. Uh, but don't worry. Uh, we'll talk more about that as we uh, as we progress. Okay. So let's uh, let's go over what we're going to talk through today. Uh, the agenda today. Uh, I'd like to talk through just an introduction to who I am, why I do this, uh, as well as what is SEO or search engine optimization. Its impacts on brand websites. Uh, keeping in mind your goals when engaging in search engine uh, search engine optimization. How you can get started with some foundational. Uh, elements of SEO, and then ultimately just capping it off with a few final thoughts uh, that you all can take away with. So um, nice to meet everyone. Uh, like I mentioned, my name is Edwin Romero. I, oops, do, 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 do. bear with me as I try to move. There we go. My name is Edwin Romero. I've been in this space for 10 years. As an, in, I've recently transitioned over to being an independent SEO consultant. I've had the good fortune of working with small businesses, mid-sized organizations, and enterprise-level clients. I am an I am experienced in strategy, technical, content, and offsite. And if this is your first introduction to search engine optimization, um, it's it can be a lot to take in. So. Uh, could, completely, you know, it's completely fine. If, if you're still lost at the end of the presentation, I'll do my best to kind of walk through some foundational uh, uh, elements of SEO. But just a little bit of background on, on why I do these presentations, why I talk about SEO to small businesses. My family or my parents started a business uh, 20 years ago uh, on the northwest side of Chicago, Logan Square. Uh, it's called El Condor or El Condor. And I helped build their website. And as I began building the website, there were elements of search engine optimization I began picking up. But it also gave me this perspective where, oh my gosh, there's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of things that business owners, particularly small business owners, may not be aware of SEO. Um, and I want to help you guys, you know, comb through kind of the the misconceptions and the things that might actually do you more harm than good. Uh, and again, help you uh, get set up for success within the organic space. Okay. So 
let's talk about let's talk about SEO. What is SEO or search engine optimization or organic search? At the highest level possible, SEO is about visibility or the process of improving your website's visibility in the eyes of search engines. You improve a search engine's understanding of your website, its content, what you have to offer. What that tra may translate to is improved rankings within search results. Improved rankings, meaning you go from position 10 to position one, ideally, but it also means users are closer to the very top and ultimately more likely to click on your website, ultimately increasing the visibility to your website to users as well. So that's what SEO is really about, is improving website visibility, not only to search engines, but also to users. So what I want to walk through is the makeup of a search engine landing page or a SERP. We have a screenshot here of Pitbull Pajamas, uh, this SERP here. And if you haven't looked at Pitbulls in pajamas, do yourself a favor and look up images. It's, it's really adorable. But in our case, what we want to do is dissect this SERP. At the very tippity top, we have paid search or SEM or PPC, which you might be aware of. Um, this, these are essentially ads, which aren't bad. You have a lot more control over where you rank. And they're very immediate if you begin spending on ads. And you only pay when somebody clicks. That's the, the, the first misconception, is that paid search is organic search, and that is not the case. Organic search as be, falls below paid search. They're, they produce great consumer trust. It's a lot more natural, so search, uh, users rely on these, ad, these listings as something trustworthy. However, they're, they're very exposed to the very changing nature of organic search. Uh, so the, the various algorithms and computations that exist to calculate the positioning, uh, you're at the whim of those algorithms. It's a lot lower cost. You know, there is no ad spend. You just have to invest time and energy, which again comes with its own cost. Uh, and it's not immediate. Right? So it's, it's not something where you can optimize a web page and expect to be ranking really well uh, overnight. I'll put a pin in it for now because I, I want to talk about this difference between paid search and organic search really quickly. Um, so I've worked with businesses in the past. I've talked to businesses in the past that basically state, you know what, we don't, we don't really, we, we got organic search. We got SEO down. It's totally fine. We just pay our partner this amount of money, and then we pay for all the ads to help us drive traffic to our, our website. That's a big red flag. You might be able to pay an SEO partner to help optimize websites, but you should not be paying them a supplemental fee to be found on search results. You know, when I talked to one particular business owner, they said, yeah, I pay ads to be found on Google and, and, I'm, I, and you know, that's my SEO. That's not SEO. That's paid search. Once you remove the ads, once your budget is gone, your website is gone. So that's why it's significant to invest into SEO as a supplement to, well, your marketing efforts. So just want to make sure you guys are aware of that. For those that have brick and mortars, that means storefronts, businesses that you can visit, like restaurants, bars, uh, any kind of store, you can have a, a localized SERP, so a localized search engine results page. And what that looks like is like this. We have a search result here for coffee shops near me. Within coffee shops near me, we have a, what's called a local pack. And that includes a map of all the surrounding businesses that might be relevant to your query or to your keyword. That includes ratings and reviews and supplemental businesses that are relevant to your keyword. But then as we progress lower and lower within the search results, we get the traditional blue links. So we have 22 best coffee shops in Chicago. As we continue to scroll down, we have more organic listings, more of those traditional blue links, and they're more around uh, best places, best coffee shops to visit, uh, ratings and reviews, Yelp, all that good stuff. So more and more, I guess, links. As we progress even further, we have more suggestions. So in this case, these are just variations of things you might be interested in that are a little bit relevant towards coffee shops near you, including coffee shop Chicago, dine-in coffee shops, uh, open uh, coffee shops open now, and so on and so forth. So what you may not realize is that the SERPs may be extraordinarily, 
I don't want to say complex, but they may be very robust and they may be a myriad of result types. It might be just maps, or local businesses, the traditional blue links, images, ratings and reviews, discovering more places. So just because you are a small business doesn't necessarily mean that SEO may not be a good fit. There might be a good fit for you depending on your goals, which we'll talk about in a moment. Okay. So how do you rank your website in, uh, in organic search with using SEO? Well, just to give you an understanding, search engines take approximately 200 ranking signals to calculate the positioning of search results. That's 200 ranking signals that I, honestly, I probably know, I'm not gonna even lie to you and say I know all 200 because I really don't. And since I've created, uh, since I've started presenting or taken on SEO as a career, I'm sure that's evolved even substantially. You know, um, but some of the things you might expect to see that are included in these 200 ranking factors are things like content, uh, how fast your website is, how relevant your website is. So you don't have to know the entirety of those 200 ranking factors, but you have to at least understand what's going to provide a very, very relevant and good user experience to your prospects. Okay. So. I want to talk through the impacts of SEO in this next section. Um, what I'll do is, is take a breather uh, and see if there are any comments or questions that anyone wants to walk through um, right now. I'm not sure if uh, there's anything there. OK, doesn't look like there are any comments or questions just yet. Um, Okay, cool. So let's keep uh, trucking along, huh? Oh, that's not it. The impacts of SEO. So just to give you an understanding, 64% of searchers trust search engines when performing research on a business. Well, that's significant. You know, you want to make sure that you're not just resorting to Yelp. You know, you're not resorting to uh, just uh, Google's ratings and reviews, that you actually have a voice to supplement those ratings and reviews. 46% of searches have localized intent. That's almost half of all searches. And I'm sure this has increased. This, this data was taken in 2018. Almost half of all searches are users trying to find something near them. So if you're, a, particularly if you're a brick and mortar, you want to make sure that you start uh, taking up SEO, local SEO. The close rate is much higher using search engine optimization than it is through some other type of lead, particularly cold calling and direct email. The close rate for, through search engines is about 14.5%, whereas other outbound leads is about 1.7, 1, 1, 1. so much, much higher. 78% of uh, mobile searches result in an offline purchase. I mean, that goes to show that people who are using, through their, uh, using uh, Google and Bing through the mobile devices have conversion intent. They want to buy something. That aside, there are a lot of individuals who now rely on their phones to, to find businesses and other information. So now, what do I, how do I go ahead and, I, I sorry, I read a question here. How do you get uniqueness? That's, that's a more of a strategic um, question. Like, how do you single out your, from Donna, Donna Hume. Uh, Donna, that, that is more of a, a strategic question on how do you Separate yourself as a business uh, compared to the competition. And, and you know, I, I'd say look for something that the competition itself, they're not doing. I guess one of the one of the highest level, I guess, recommendations I could give to you as an example, look at your competitor's website. What are they doing? What what are they doing that you feel like you can pick up the slack on? For example, they might not have a blog you know, in, in the space, that gives you an opportunity to go ahead and, and pick up a blog, or maybe they might not be engaged, maybe they don't have informative content. And then you can write about informative content around your products or services. That's a good way to separate yourself from, uh, from I guess, the, the competition. Okay. But it comes back to knowing your branding, your competitive landscape. So goals. Why are goals significant? Well, honestly, how can you measure success and progress if you don't have goals? You know, um, so let's let's talk through how do we how do we keep goals in mind? Okay, depending on your goals um, and what you're striving towards, you want to make sure that you build your SEO strategy around those goals. It might just be that your goal is to get more money. Well, that's great, but not every single 
every single brand's website is around getting more money. It's maybe getting more leads, maybe more calls to come through, uh, or maybe more form submissions. So understanding what you want to help drive your business will ultimately help you cater an SEO strategy around those goals. And to keep you, keep you thinking about your goals, um, start collecting a list of KPIs or, or key performance indicators. If you began to measure your, 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 your goals and your progress, what would they look like? You know, it might be revenue. It might be traffic. It might be phone calls. It might be contact submissions or check-ins or subscriptions. Just understand what keeps your business afloat and how you can continue strengthening, strengthening that part of your business using SEO. Once you have an understanding of how to best strengthen your business with the goals you have in mind, you want to build around your goals. So what I mean by that is maybe you can continue growing your business through a blog. Predominantly speaking, WordPress is a phenomenal blogging uh, platform. Or maybe you want to use something like Drupal, the middle of the little middle icon right here. Or maybe you do have an e-com idea or you want to integrate e-commerce onto your website. Shopify is the way to go. Um, or maybe it's more creative, music, um, arti artistic, Squarespace. Or maybe you're much larger than, than you uh, had originally thought for WordPress or Drupal or Shopify. You want to incorporate um, Salesforce Commerce Cloud or Magento too. So these ideas, these platforms themselves, you have to you know, ensure that they, they cater towards your goals, okay? So with that, I'll be speaking through how to get started with SEO through some, um, some foundational elements that you want to keep in mind as you're, as you're uh, optimizing your site, okay? Um, how do you, I just want to make sure if there are any outstanding questions. Looks like Donna, Donna has a couple. I'm not sure if I answered that. Uh, is there a difference in traditional SEO and voice-based SEO? Diane Jones, I think what, if, if I understand correctly, traditional SEO versus maybe voice searched, you know, like you go to Alexa, hey, Alexa, what's the recipe for velvet cakes or something like that? Or Siri, yes, that's voice search, exactly. So it's, it gets pretty wild stuff. It becomes really wild. So with something like voice search, it's, it's a whole different breed of SEO. It is SEO, but you have to structure your content in such a way that it's easily to parse through or to understand by search engines and users. On top of that, and I won't really be getting into it, but it does get complex because there is specialized HTML code that you would have to implement to provide further context around your, your document or your article or your content. Um, that would result in, in voice search as, as a voice search um, result. Um, I, don't, I don't wanna say that you know, voice search is the way to go. It really depends on your business and your goals. It might, that, it might be that you know, voice search is, is critical to your business, or it might be that there are different avenues that might also supplement uh, your business. So like traditional SEO and, and whatnot. Cool. Um, I hope that helped. Um, I don't see any other questions, so I'm going to go ahead and keep at it. So getting started in SEO. What I like to talk through right now is what I call the pillars of SEO. So remember, those, there's, there's a lot of ranking factors, 200 ranking factors. That, that is an immense amount, and it can be very overwhelming. So a good way I like to, to segment the, the various 200 ranking factors is by categorizing them in, into various pillars. The first pillar, which I typically recommend all brands invest in or try to optimize around, is technical SEO. Reason being is that technical SEO impacts your visibility by improving the access to your site. So what many, many users may not be aware of is that search engines like Bing and Google and, and DuckDuckGo and, and Apple even, they have these pieces of software called bots, little spiders. And what they do is they scour the web, picking up on as much information as they can about a brand and its site. If we block those bots, those crawlers, then your search engines aren't going to be able to view your site. So that's why I feel like technical SEO, and that's just one example of technical SEO, but it's one important example. And one of the reasons why I recommend brands invest in technical SEO to make sure it's very sound. Oftentimes it's, it's, it's I don't want to say it's a quick affair. 
it, it always depends on, on where you're at and what your goals are, but it can impact visibility. So something you definitely don't wanna block off to search engines. The next pillar is content. And when I say content, that's more around the relevancy that your site has with a specific audience, with a specific topic. Now, what content does is it ensures that your brand website and your, your brand speaks to a slew of topics, speaks to user trends. So you want to make sure that your website, let's say you are, you do sell pit bull pajamas. You don't want to be talking about velvet cakes, cupcakes, because there's really a lack of relevancy. Rather, you want to hone in on that relevancy uh, by strict, uh, strictly talking to pajamas, pit bull pajamas, dog pajamas, and the like. Okay. The last one, is offsite, which is ultimately around authority, how authoritative your website is in a, a sea of websites, or at least a, a, a sea of relevant websites. Uh, and that is basically around factors outside of a website that impact your rankings. Now, you may have heard of link building or backlinks, building links from uh, uh, an outside website and pointing it to your website. Um, essentially, search engines are really smart, but they depend very, very much so on links from external websites to your websites to, to give you a vote of confidence to say, hey, you know what? This website on Pitbull Pajamas, it's a pretty good site. So we we'll want to go ahead and have that perform really well in, in search results. Okay. So I'm going to slightly deviate away from the standard PowerPoint presentation because I think it's I think it's a it's a lot more impactful to talk through these dashboards. Um, as a live walkthrough. So what I'll do is talk through some of the foundational uh, SEO stuff, but let me, let me go and show you what I, what I have right here. So let me see here. Okay, so I have all these tabs and all these tabs essentially correlate to a slide on my presentation. The first one is Google Search Console. If you have a website that is up and running and you want to continue performing really well, one of the first things I advise is make sure that Google Search Console you, is verified. What Google Search Console is, is a, it's a site hygiene tool, but more importantly, it tells search engines, hey, you know what, this website is live. These are all the metrics and data that are happening right now in, 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 in the, with a specific site. Um, it also tells you if there are any issues or errors with your website. It gives you an opportunity to submit something called a site map, so which is a list of, of URLs that are housed on your site, uh, on your site directly to Google. Um, now keep in mind, this won't present or provide uh, data around like paid search, social, direct. This is only organic search or SEO. This is my website. So you can see here, I get pretty good information and it's a lot more technical. Like I, I target on my personal website, I target uh, technical topics, but you can see here like the performance over the last uh, three months for specific keywords, uh, which pages got clicks. Um, and you can actually have uh, an entire training session or a webinar on just Search Console. Uh, but understanding how your website is performing and the issues that may exist in the eyes of search engines uh, can ultimately help drive performance. So if you don't have Google Search Console verified, please verify it. Uh, depending on which platform you're on, WordPress, Wix, uh, another, there are pretty easy solutions to help get that verified. So just throwing that out there. The next platform I want to recommend you guys look into is Google Analytics. Um, so Google Analytics is a data aggregator. This one does allow you to look at other channels like social, email, paid, and, and several others. What that looks like is essentially like this. This is, again, my website here. Um, now we can see performance across, I think this was the last uh, month or so. Um, great breakdown of traffic, uh, new users, how they're leaving, uh, how long they spend on site. If you are an e-comps website, or even if you're really great at Google Analytics, you can set up conversion tracking and all that good stuff. Um, but I advise that you get this set up as well. The next dashboard I recommend is Google My Business. This is particularly important for businesses that have a storefront or a physical location that customers can go to. Um, 
in this case, I want to show you how it looks like in the back. So in this uh, right here, this is uh, my parents' website uh, or my parents' brand, El Condor, um, our family business. And, and same thing, you can look at, you can create posts, provide informational content. Uh, if you have a restaurant menu, uh, food ordering, that's really awesome too, is you can look at insights around the, 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 uh, the brand itself. Uh, which is really, really neat. Um, you can look at ratings and reviews. There's a slew of really nifty things you can comb through. Um, now this here is, I don't want you all thinking, you know, we did really bad this day, um, but all these aggregators are kind of like uh, at the whim of Google. So um, this I think was more of a, an issue on Google My Business. I think it's still, the data is still populating. But ultimately, this is a very invaluable dashboard that I recommend, especially if you have a storefront to, to help verify. So why am I talking about these reporting tools? There's a couple of reasons. One, they're all free. They don't cost anything for you to, to, to buy. Or there's no subscription. They are all offered by Google. Secondly, if you guys are investing in SEO, you need to know how you're progressing, how things are trending. How are you going to do that without data? So what these three dashboards do is collect data organic search through Google Search Console, various channel information through Google Analytics, and localized data through uh, like local SEO through Google My Business. So that's why I, I recommend you guys start here, is, is, is look towards verifying these, uh, these dashboards. Okay. Um, the next thing around technical SEO that I want you all to, to keep in mind is mobile friendliness. Um, and what I mean by mobile friendliness, I, you know, honestly, I would be surprised if any one website now exists without having a, a mobile friendly version. Um, let me go back over here. So if you want to see if your website is mobile friendly, I suggest that you guys go to this mobile friendly tester, uh, again, free from Google, and just test your website. Put in the URL and, and see if, if it is mobile friendly. If not, you may want to think through how can you make sure your website is mobile friendly, that it can be accessed through a mobile device. Reason being, Google now relies on your mobile website more than your desktop site to, to make sure that your site is, is mobile friendly. I mean, make sure your site is, is very relevant and authoritative and, and something, something that is worth ranking within search results. So you want to make sure that your site is mobile friendly. Now, because it's mobile friendly, you want to make sure that it's pretty fast, you know, that it has page speed, uh, some quality space, page speed. Now, you can see here this little graph on the right hand side, it's going really, really slow. Nothing is loading, you know, how agitated, how, how many of us have been very agitated by waiting for a website to load, you know, that impacts user experience. So you don't want to, you don't want to deter users from visiting your website, you know, you want to encourage them. And one way to encourage them is by having not only relevant content, but a very nice experience through fast page speed. And if you're curious to see what your page speed looks like, um, there's another free tool called PageSpeed Insights. So in our, my case here, I went ahead and submitted my URL for review and it, and it provides really good information. It can be really technical, so you don't have to go through all that, but in case you're wondering like what's slowing it down, it provides really good information here. Now, it might be overkill for a lot, for several, um, but just good information to have. So those are technical SEO components. Um, oh no, there's robots.txt. Um, so, robots.txt is a file that's housed at the very start of your domain. So you can see here, Amazon, uh, Amazon's robots.txt file. I don't think I have one, do I? Oh, I do. So this is my robots.txt. Um, and in here, you can provide links to what's called the sitemap URL or file. And what that does is essentially, it houses all the URLs in, in your site. Um, but the goal of a robots.txt file is to help search engines understand how to maneuver through your website. You know, maybe you don't want to show a payment portal, or maybe you don't want to show specific subfolders in your website because they, you know, they're, they're too private or they, they, you know, they don't really, they're not intended for public use. Or you might not be performing. One of the first places I start is the robots.txt because you can tell search engines where they can and cannot grow, go. And if you tell them not to go, you know, depending on how you set up your, your, your robots, you can tell them not to crawl any part of your site. Uh, 
you know, so that's that's a huge concern. Um, it might be very simple. You can see here my robots.txt. It's it's pretty straightforward. Um, but depending on how your complex your site is, uh, it might be a lot more robust. Something to keep in mind. Okay. An XML sitemap. I've talked through an XML sitemap uh, a couple times already. You know, I mentioned it. Um, and again, what that is is an opportunity for you all once you're creating your website to tell search engines like Google and Bing, hey, you know what? These are all the URLs that are housed on my website. It might be posts, a page, uh, author pages. You can take all those individual URLs and you can submit them to Google Search Console. And if you're on Bing, Bing Webmaster Tools. So in Google, Bing Webmaster Tools is, is the equivalent of Google Search Console for Bing. But what you can essentially do is you can take those URLs and you can submit them. You know, you can submit them right here, okay? Definitely advise you all to build out your, your sitemaps. Now, again, keep in mind, this is one of the beautiful things about this, uh, this day and age is that um, so a lot of users and companies are on things like Shopify, uh, WordPress, uh, Wix. Implementing a sitemap as well as a robots.txt should be uh, a lot quicker than it used to be. So um, just perform a Google search online. You can, you can find resources. Okay. So the next topic delves into um, to content. So we'll talk through a, a few examples on what I mean by, by content and, and, and things around keyword research. So uh, let me just take a break here and look at, see what, uh, what questions have been uh, around, uh, you know, popping up here. <laughs> Tamara, uh, if you do not have a brick and mortar, should you still activate the Google My Business? Mm. Off the top of my head, I say I, it's maybe don't, you know, because with Google My Business, you need an address um, unless you have like a P.O. box or something. But at the same time, you know, users can't go to it. Um, so I, I would say if, if you simply rely on services offered online, it's OK. You don't need to uh, Google My Business. It's not it shouldn't be part of your goals uh, unless there's something I'm not thinking through. Um, Areli, uh, I have a Shopify store and Shopify provides some of this information. Should I still get my site verified Google Search Console and Google Analytics? Yes, yes, you should. Um, because, I mean, Shopify is just a tool. Uh, it's an end, it's a, it's a means to an end, you know, and, and the goal should be verify your site. You know, I think Shopify has made it easier to verify your site, uh, but it still has to be done. So I, I definitely advise you get both uh, Search Console and Google Analytics. Uh, hello, DB. Uh, Gina, is the is the mobile friendly business test another free Google test option, or what platform is that by? You have to pay ten bucks. I'm just kidding. It's free. Uh, so all this, all the tools I've been providing is uh, they're free. What won't be free, uh, and I'll talk through in a moment, is um, some keyword research tools. Um, but the Google My Business, Google Search Console, Google Analytics, uh, the mobile test, uh, the mobile test tools, PageSpeed tools, they're all, they're all free. And I, I'll, I'll talk through why. You know, a lot of people rely on Google. You know, it's it's been a very lucrative, you know, form of of getting a business. So search engines want to make sure that you keep using their tool to drive business and, and get customers. So I think in that sense, it's one of the reasons why a lot of these tools are free. Um, we'll talk again about more uh, tools that, that, that come with a cost. That was in fact, though, through Google, yep. Yeah, I, I believe so, actually. I'm pretty sure that was through Google. Yeah, it's Google. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah, Alina, I, I think, um, you know what, this, this recording is going to be made available through YouTube. Um, I can go through them again, just so you can take notes. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it shouldn't be that difficult to get your hands on this, this, uh, these lists of websites I mentioned. Okay. Um, so with that, let's uh, move on to content. Keyword research. Um, so I'm not sure how many individuals on the call are familiar with keywords or queries or terms, you know. Um, the, the reason why I think keyword research is significant is because you need to understand how your users are searching for your type of business. Let's say my parents' uh, business is called El Condor. But I don't want to know how they're looking for El Condor. We distribute 
Ecuadorian products and Peruvian products. So I want to understand how users are finding Ecuadorian product websites or Peruvian product websites or Latino wholesalers and stuff like that. So I, I need to understand what how users are looking for. And in order to do that, keyword research has to be performed. If you're going to provide key, if you're going to be looking into keyword research, you want to understand your brand. You know, what is your brand really offering? You know, I, I know for a lot of us, our businesses are our babies. So we want to have to take us, we need to take a step back and really assess what are we offering. On top of that, you have to understand your audience. How is your audience audience looking for the products and services that you're selling? Not directly from you, but without a um, without I guess a brand association. Like I gave an example earlier, Latino Latino wholesalers, Peruvian, Ecuadorian. Those are examples of what's called non-branded keywords. Um, how relevant is your brand to those keywords? Again, from a previous example. If I own a Pippo Pajamas website and I'm optimizing around red velvet cupcakes, there's not really a whole bunch of uh, uh, relevancy there. So that's going to impact uh, how you perform. You want to look at something called monthly search volume or MSV. And that is essentially how often is a keyword searched on a monthly basis. And we'll talk through some examples. Uh, I'll talk through one tool that I use on a regular basis. And then ultimately, you want to look at your competitors. You know, how are your competitors using SEO? How are your competitors using their, their keywords and, and content? Uh, I don't know what happened here. Let me go ahead and move this. Close. Cool. So looking, your, uh, looking at your competitors for inspiration. So some keyword research tools that I typically recommend to individuals. Um, take a screenshot, however you like, but these are the industry is filled with just uh, tools out there. Uh, some tools include Keywords Everywhere, which I'll talk through in a moment, Keyword Keyword Planner, uh, Google Keyword Planner, which are basically data, it's, data, it's data provided by Google for their ad spenders, so people that have ads with them. Google Trends, um, which is a nice website to understand how a keyword has been trending. SEMrush, Ahrefs, which are enterprise tools, so tools for like mid-sized to bigger businesses. Answer the Public, uh, which is a tool online that, that basically converts your, your, your phrase to questions. Um, and I provide here a list of, of tools that you might uh, want to be interested in. But if you're interested on, on kind of browsing or perusing, uh, perusing uh, I think that's a word, uh, browsing uh, tools, then simply provide a uh, look for uh, SEO keyword tools online. Um, again, there's no shortage. Now, going back to what I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure you monitor how you're performing with specific keywords and you want to track them where, net, where possible. And there are some really good trackers and performance tools out there, including SEMrush, Ahref, Ahrefs, Moz, Bright Local, Yaxt. Now, if you're really good with uh, technical dashboards, you can also use something called Google Data Studio, which is another Google tool for free uh, that allows you to consolidate data from Search Console, uh, analytics, and uh, to a degree, my business, but uh, Google my business, but that's a, it's a little rough. So this is all keyword research tool. I think uh, it's, it's a lot to take in. Uh, I mean, there's, there's I, I, think, um, I think what would help right now is to kind of talk through um, some of the stuff uh, through some live examples. Um, but before we delve into a live example, I just want to talk on page titles. So page titles here, you know what? Let me go over, go over to my browser. Page titles are essentially this here. You see this? And this, and this, and this. They're essentially the name of a given web page. The way, you know, Edwin is important to me and my personality and who I am. A web page's name is extraordinarily important to that web page. So the page title is important to that web page because it's the name of the document and it's there's a heavy weight that comes with it. Now, how do you figure out, well, what are we going to put into our page titles? What keywords are we going to put into our page titles? Now, I mentioned earlier, there are a slew of tools out there. So I'm kind of taking it a step back. And one of the tools that I heavily recommend is Keywords Everywhere. Again, I recommend Keywords Everywhere. I'm not being paid by Keywords Everywhere, but I do believe in the tool a lot. And this is why. 
When you look up for pit bull, when you look up pit bull pajamas, you want to understand how often is that keyword searched. In our case, keywords everywhere tells us this keyword is searched 44,000, 4,400 times a month. That's that's pretty important to know. Um, then it provides a slew of information. We'll look on the right hand side here. This is trending data. So this is pulling in Google. I believe it's pulling in Google Trends. We mentioned that briefly a moment ago. Um, how Pitbull Pajamas has been trending in popularity over the last, uh, I think this is the last 10, 20 years, or something like that. Um, and then for various keyword like ad hoc on the fly keyword research, it's a phenomenal tool. Um, it's not too expensive. I use keywords everywhere. I think I bought this one here about a year ago, maybe six, seven months ago. Um, and it cost me, I think $10 for 100,000 credits and one credit equals one piece of data. So I think this is a credit, that's a credit, that's a credit. But you know, if it sounds expensive, I'm down to 22,000, 22,500 credits left. And I ended up buying this about six or seven months ago and I'm an SEOer. So I use it a lot and I still have a ton left. So if you're looking for something that is, you know, cost effective and you're looking for a keyword research tool, I definitely recommend uh, keywords everywhere. So I know that was a, that was a slight segue, um, but Ultimately, what you find in your keyword research will go into things like the page title and, and various aspects of your content. Going back to the page title, some recommendations. Keep it, don't keep, don't, don't write a ton, you know, don't write full sentences. Uh, keep it around 55 to 65 characters. Use the keywords that you had found in your research and avoid overuse. So I've seen brands talk about pitbull pajamas, pajamas for pitbulls and dogs. Pajamas you might like, dash, pity clothing. You know, it's it becomes too much, becomes spammy. So you want to use a light touch, but you want you do want to reinforce your keywords. Page titles uh, are, are a really good place to start, and we'll talk about uh, another area where you can we can look at that. Use your company name because what it does, at least that's what, what at least what I think is, it reinforces the the keyword in our case here, pitbull pajamas with the brand name, which is pity clothing. You know, you keep reinforcing, uh, you keep tying them together, building a, a level of relevancy. And this goes without saying, I suppose, make it eye-catching, compelling. You know, there might be things that your competitor is doing that's pretty dry and boring. You know, you can give yourself an edge on uh, using your keywords and making it very, um, very eye-catching, enthusiastic. Um, so some, some best practices, some tips. So where else do the keyword keywords go? or the meta description. So the meta description is essentially a, a synopsis or a summary of your web page. Now, this is the meta description. This is the meta description. And this is the meta description here. And it goes on and on and on. Now, what you may find that it's not going to be, it's the meta description, like the page title, is not going to be found anywhere on this page here. Uh, let's see, there you go. It's not going to be found anywhere here. The only location where you're going to find the page title is right here, as well as within the actual HTML source code. So in the HTML itself, the meta description, it's not gonna be up here. It's gonna be again in the source code. So let me go ahead and, and show you what that kind of looks like. I don't want you thinking, oh my goodness, I have to be a developer to figure all this stuff out. You really don't. Um, it's, it's pretty, um, it's pretty straightforward if once you get used to it. Uh, I'm not going to even call, talk through any any portion of this here, but let's say you want to understand what your uh, description is. This is where it's located, or your title. This is where it's located. But let's say, hey, you know what? I don't want to look at source code. It hurts my head. That's totally fine. One of the tools I recommend if you're using Chrome is an extension called SEO Peak. This is SEO Peak. So I'm going to click on it. And what it does is it basically looks through your HTML to pick up on some very important SEO information, the page title, the meta description, meta keywords. You don't want to use meta keywords. Uh, they're, they're not a SEO ranking factor. Um, H1 tag and a whole bunch of other technical stuff that might be very important to your, uh, to your website. But in case you don't want to, again, you don't want to look at the HTML, you can use something like SEO peak, a free extension from Chrome and within, within the Chrome store. I think I forget what it's called, uh, but it's free. So now 
where else can we uh, uh, optimize content with the, the keywords that we found? On page copy. So in our case here, and I think Pity Pajamas updated their, their web page. But on page copy, copy essentially means any anything, any content that's found on the actual page. So anywhere on here. So you, let's say this one is Pitbull Pajamas, PJs. Let's look up pajamas. In our case here, pajamas has been referenced 34 times on the content here. So like, uh, and they're not, they're not, you know, a, you know, spammy or anything like that. They're associated with the products, but it, it does reinforce the content that's going to be found on this page. And in our case, let's say this page, we've targeted matching pajamas or matching PJs or, or pitbull pajamas. It's reinforcing the keyword that we've targeted on our page. Okay. Uh, the H1, I talked about that moments ago. I think uh, it's right here. This is the H1, another component of on-page copy, things you want to make sure you're optimize, you optimize. Tying back or looping back in the page title, the page title is probably the, the most important single SEO element that you can optimize. Content is, is just as significant, but in a different way. In terms of single elements, the next one below a page title is the H1. So you want to make sure that your keyword that you found you're ultimately optimizing it within the H1 as well. And just by looking at pit bull pajamas or pitting clothing, I should say, I, I believe that their targeted keyword is matching PJs because it's reinforced both in the H1 and in the page title. So that's just, a, just an insight um, I'm throwing out there. Okay. In some cases, you guys not might not be selling e uh, products. It might be that you're running a blog, and you know uh, that's significant towards you. Um, so again, finding a keyword for a specific post or a page, and reinforcing it through the page title, the meta description, H1 on page copy. Okay. Some other areas um, where you can optimize content. They include the URL structure. That's a ranking factor uh, within the navigation. Um, so just making sure that the the, the keywords and, and um, the content there are optimized. The header tags. We talked about H1 tags. There are other uh, header other types of header tags below the H1, H2s, H3s, H4s, and H5s. But the main one you want to focus on is the H1. And then ultimately, focusing on anchor text. What an anchor text is is if we go up here, we can see matching adult and pup pajamas, matching baby and pup onesies. These are all links, yes. They function as a link. If I click through to, to one of these, it'll take me to a different web page. But the content or the text that's linked is called an anchor text. That's significant. You know, you want to make sure that the anchor text is uh, optimized uh, when you link out to a specific page because what ends up happening is search engines pass on what's called link authority, link equity, um, when you build out a link. And what reinforces the relevancy uh, for a specific page is the anchor text. So that's why you want to maybe be very careful on anchor text and be very deliberate and strategic with these anchor texts. Okay. Cool. So, um, Link building. This is always a, a fun one. Um, I, I'll be honest, I'm not a link building expert. It's something that I, I've, I really don't do, but I know that there are, are dangerous ways of doing link building. So remember early on in this section, we talked about you know, offsite factors that impact the performance of a website. And that includes link building. So building links from relevant sites pointing back to your website. Link building becomes dangerous because you might engage in, I guess, shady tactics. You might pay somebody to buy you links and Google can pick that up. You know, they're, they're pretty smart. They're very smart. So if they pick up that you've been buying links, they might just penalize your site to the point where you're not even performing at all. Now, there are some good ways to build links through, um, you know, I guess, guest blog posts. Actually, let me share it with you. 
uh, you know, because local businesses um, can apply, can be a part of chambers of commerce. You can, as a member, you can build backlinks to chambers of commerce. Having local calendars when you have events, uh, you can be, you can strive towards being a best of uh, type of business and and various guides. Um, you can submit donations as opportunities. Uh, I know a lot of websites have thank our vendors, uh, our donation, our donors, I should say, and they build link out to websites. Uh, submit towards local awards and shout outs um, and some local directories. So I want to pause here because I think this is a point of, um, of agitation for me. I, I talked about moments ago where uh, um, one of the business owners I've talked to said they, they paid for ads because it was their SEO strategy and that's not the case. I don't like when, when vendors are very manipulative uh, and say, you know what, you have to do this, otherwise X, Y, Z is gonna happen. And I'm gonna show you something. So I'm gonna actually see if I can stop sharing my screen for a second, because I wanna go full screen. Um, I'm sure you guys can see me and I'm, I'm probably blowing up, but can you all see this here? I don't think you can. Hopefully you can. You might be able to. Um, this says domain registry. This came to our family business. Domain registry looks like a very official document. And ultimately it says you have to submit your payment of $200, $300 to be included in the United States domain registry. The United States government does not have a registry for all the websites. That is actually false. And it's very manipulative in that it's a directory. You know, you're paying to be part of the directory. So as business owners, I, I encourage you all to, you know, don't, don't jump the gun on this stuff and don't be freaked out by it. Cause you know, I think it, we've all been there as, as business owners, we, we get solicited a lot. Um, but that's a pretty good example of uh, a, limp, a link building tactic that I don't really like. I think it's very shady and I'm sure Google is aware of that. And so the links you build out to domain registry uh, aren't gonna be very valuable. Um, so I know I was, uh, I segued a little bit there but I think it's important to note um, for business owners to understand. So let me go and share my screen again. Last thing. Oh, actually, I already talked about it. Don't buy links. <laughs> Don't not buy links. Uh, Google can pick up on that. Citations and uh, citations and NAPW. So this is important for localized businesses. Uh, you have to reinforce. You have to reinforce your business and brand multiple times so Google can understand it. Um, so that includes looking at your well, well your business's name your address, the phone number, and the business URL. Uh, and making sure it's found through websites that are have localized intent, like Google My Business, Bing Places, Yelp, Facebook, Yahoo Local, anywhere that is, I would say, relatively credible, you want to make sure you submit. You want to build this relationship with Google or this understanding with Google that you are a local business and that you are a part of a specific, I guess, industry. So... I encourage you all to, I think these are, I don't know if they're like directories, but places you want to verify, you know, Google My Business, Bing Places, Yelp, Facebook, and uh, a few others here. So, so I want to leave it with a few, fin a few final thoughts. Um, so Gina's mentioned, I saw back with Lily here. Where do you go to choose a page title and the meta description? So it depends where you write out your meta description and your page title meta description. Most platforms have a specific location where you can insert the page title meta description. WordPress is a really good example. Shopify 2, I believe. Uh, honestly, most, most of those platforms already come pretty much SEO built. Um, so it shouldn't be all that bad. I would, I would say perform a Google search and say where to put page title for XYZ. WordPress, Wix, so on and so forth. Uh, Gina, please show the link building slide again too. I will do that in a, in a second. Um, and then Keisha, Keisha, I'm so sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, can you show the slide for the keyword research? Uh, keyword research. Okay, so I'm gonna go really quickly, uh, show the link building slide one more time. I believe it was this one. Um, I'll leave it on for a second and Kesha, Kesha, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go ahead and show the title for the key, uh, the the slide for the keyword research right now. So I hope I give you all enough time. There we go.
So I'll leave it there for a second. And as that's there, I'm going to go ahead and see Alina. Did Google My Business is did Google My Business is still a good option, or did Google now offers Google Maps and search only? What's really interesting is Google My Business. You actually with Google Maps, um, you know, you look up uh, Ecuadorian stores near me. Um, actually, that's it's really hyper specific. Um, coffee shop, yeah, coffee shop near me. By having Google My Business. Um, you actually are more likely to perform really well in Google Maps and stuff like that and, 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 and that area, um, as well as search. So I, I do recommend if you have, again, a brick and mortar where users can, uh, when searchers or the public can go to, verify Google My Business. I heard, Donna, I heard that if you link to another website, that it impacts your website's optimization. I think if your uh, every other word was a link to another website, and uh, I don't, it's not helping you. It really isn't. But let's say you're writing a post around, um, you know, Brazilian coffee. And there were some t- statistics on, on a, a very credible uh, scientific journal. If you were to link to that scientific journal, it's not doing any harm. Right? It's honestly enhancing the user experience because you did your due diligence and your research and you're pointing them to another avenue where they can benefit from. So I think it's okay. I don't think it's, it's a bad thing. Oh, does it harm the others website? Um, well, you, yeah. Well, there's a it's a there's a very shady practice online where it's called I forget what it's called, but it's it's basically buying up backlinks and pointing to the pointing them to um, a competitor. You can do that, but what's crazy is Google is just so smart is that they can identify those types of what they call I think link farms. So I think you'll be okay. You know, it won't harm them. It can only benefit them if you're doing it for the user experience. But if you're doing it for malicious intent, Google will probably pick up on that. And, and that might, might be more harmful for you. Can you scroll back to the on-page copy slide so that I can just quickly scroll? Da, 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 da. Okay, I believe that's it. Uh, dude, I hope that helped answer that. I uh, want to take a screenshot. I think, yeah, all right. So now what I'll do, everyone, is I'll go ahead and talk through a few final thoughts. SEO is a process. And I know as business owners, it's, you know, time is money. Um, but I, I implore that you all, you know, be patient with SEO. You know, and, and I've heard, I've talked to executives from mid-sized organizations to enterprise uh, companies that say SEO is a joke. It's like maybe maybe you're not using it in, a, in the most strategic fashion. You know, that's maybe SEO isn't a good fit, but it doesn't mean there's not value in it. Uh, I think there's a ton of value in SEO, uh, but be patient with it and have a strategy behind it and how it can work for you. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, keep in mind the pillars of SEO, technical, content, and offsite. Don't don't lose over don't lose any sleep over optimizing all 200 ranking factors because that's not going to happen. Just optimize around some of the most significant ones. Claim your listings that includes Google My Business, Yelp, and uh, and Facebook. So, be patient, be kind to yourselves. Um, I that, that is all I have. Um, I think we have a few minutes. Any comments or questions? All right, I'll give it a couple more minutes. I hope that was enjoyable for everyone. Donna Donahue mentioned, how do you location competitors keywords? How do you look at location competitors keywords? So there is a couple of ways uh, they get pretty creative. Uh, if you're trying to look at a local competitor's keywords um, on Google My Business, it might be, I think you you might have to, might be a little tougher, but let's say, let's say, you know, I'm not pity clothing. Let's say they're a direct competitor of mine and I want to find all their keywords, you know, so let's say I do this, they're very, very tippity top. I have keywords everywhere attached to, uh, to my browser. So you see this number right here? Let's click on it. So now what I do, what keyword, keywords everywhere, do, everywhere does is it displays all the keywords associated with a specific URL. You can take a competitive URL, competitor's URL, and look at the keywords that are performing, which is amazing. Again, I'm not being paid by keywords everywhere, but I really, really do enjoy it. And I do re- really recommend it as a keyword research tool. 
how often should you update your keywords? I think that's dependent on the trends that you are seeing. You know, if you think, hey, you know what? These keywords, I'm optimizing around that. And as time progresses, you're not ranking for those keywords. Rather, you're finding that a web page is performing well for these other keywords. Maybe that's an opportunity to go ahead and, and see where you can optimize these keywords. So it takes time, it takes practice. I think a lot of my job is, is just doing reporting, gathering insights and readjusting. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think, all right, do you provide one-to-one -one services? Um, that's, a, that's a tough one, one-to-one -to -one services. Feel free to reach out to me um, and then we can have a conversation. Um, where do I find Keywords Everywhere and Bing? Guys, that's what's awesome about Keywords Everywhere. Check us out. Let's uh, say I look up uh, Pity Pajamas. I don't know if it's keyword level data for, for Bing, but Keywords Everywhere, I believe does provide keyword data. Oh, it does, cool. So I think this is, I wanna say, I wanna say that's uh, Bing level data. So let's go over here, let's do it again. Oh, uh, you know what? This might be this might be uh, Google data. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if I forget if Bing has uh, keyword research uh, keyword research. But in all honesty, Bing does a, really tries to to copy a lot what, of what um, Google does. So maybe your optimizations on a keyword level might also work on Bing. Can you email the presentation? Um, I will look at. I will. Put down my information here. If you like the presentation, please feel free to reach out to me at edwin at edwindanromero.com. And we can get that shirt. Uh, thank you, everyone. Yes, the record uh, the deck or uh, the presentation will be recorded and put into BACP's uh, YouTube channel. Um, if you like the presentation, um, Look out for the, re, uh, the recording or, or email at me at Edwin at Edwin Dan Romero or find me on LinkedIn or tweet me or however you like. I'm available. Uh, let's see here. Does this apply to LinkedIn as well? I would say so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you can, if you can, you know, have a, a company profile on LinkedIn, do it. You know what? You're building out your brand presence. This is beyond SEO. You're building out your persona as a brand and, and LinkedIn is a good resource for that. Can you show the meta description slide again? Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, can you provide us your info again, please? Uh, my email address is edwin at edwindanromero.com. And I'm going to scroll over to this slide again. Oh, and if you guys want to have your phones at the ready, feel free to, with your camera, take a picture of, uh, or take a picture or look at the camera lens or use the camera lens to look at this uh, QR code. Researching is fun and really brings insights into the industries. I agree, Divi. I really agree. They're a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, everyone, so much for the kind words. I really do appreciate it. It does mean a lot to me. Um, I don't see any more questions. Um, I hope this was enjoyable and valuable for you all. And if not, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just reach out to me and we can have a conversation. I'm not sure if anyone at the BACP uh, wants to take the reins. All right. Well, guess I'll log off. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Edwin. Thank you.